Now, there's one thing that I've been asked time and time again where I've been working on and creating content on how to use advanced custom fields to create much more complex websites, things like real estate websites, business listing websites, and so on, is how do we create a map with multiple pinpoints that will show the businesses, and we can then click on any of those pinpoints and go through the business details. Today, I'm going to show you how you can do that with one simple plugin alongside ACF and Elementor Pro. So join me, I'm going to take you through all of that. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. I've got a map, and as you can see, we've got three pinpoints. I can click on any of those pinpoints, it'll take me through to actually view the business or the property itself. So you can see, there's the property details. If I come back out to the map, choose a different one, we then jump through to the property in London, and as you can see, a completely different property. So this is a nice way of working where you create that simple map and let the end user simply click where they want. We need one plugin to do this though on top of Elementor Pro and ACF. We need to have dynamic content for Elementor. Now, I'm creating a series of videos on this. This isn't one of the sponsored videos. This is just one that I think is incredibly useful and answers a lot of those questions that I get asked repeatedly on how to do this kind of thing. So I'm going to quickly take you through and show you the process of setting things up and how you link the two plugins together. Firstly, we need to make sure that we've got advanced custom fields configured the way we need it to be. So jump to the dashboard and what I'm going to do is come down to the custom field section. And in there, we're going to open up the field groups. Now, I've already created this for a video tutorial that I'm working on that will cover this in a lot more detail. All you need to do is make sure you've got at least one field to set up correctly. All the rest can be configured any way you want. So we're going to open up the property details section. I'm going to open that inside ACF. And we're going to come down and you can see in the first section, I've got basic details and so on. And I've got a map field. Now, this is the important thing we need. If we open that map field up, it needs to make sure that it's a Google map field inside ACF. Now, you don't need to reference this anywhere else. You just need this to make sure that you can use it in conjunction with the map plugin. So with that set up and configured, we've got everything we need in place. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to come over and just show you how easy it is to link that through. I'm going to come over and we're going to create a new page. From there, we're going to say add new. And from this, we're just going to create a map page. I'm going to call this map. It doesn't really matter what we're going to call it. And I'm going to hit on publish. So we've saved that out, ready to open up Elementor. I'm going to open Elementor. And from there, we're going to use the map plugin. But we're not going to use the normal map plugin. We need that dynamic content plugin. So if we scroll right the way down, you can see I've got a ton of new widgets installed in here. They're all to do with the dynamic content for Elementor plugin. What we need to do is make sure that we've got the Google Maps one. So I'm going to simply scroll to the top just to make life easy. And we're going to type in Google. And you can see we've got the normal Google Maps, which is part of Elementor. What we want is the ACF Google Maps, which is part of dynamic content drag and drop that onto our page. And you see that now opens up the blank map. It's blank because, well, technically we haven't linked anything through. So it's got no data to pull anything in from. So first of all, we've got the dynamic data type. As you can see, it says we've got ACF map, ACF map field. Click, you can see we've got three options in total. The map field, an address or a latitude and longitude option. We want to make sure we've got the map field because we're going to link it through to that. Next up, you can see it says ACF map, and this is where we tell it where we want to grab that field data from. Click and open that up, and you can see it's already looked through to find any of the dynamic data set up through ACF that's a Google map field. As you can see, we've only got one. So I'm going to click on that, and you'll find now that starts to drop some pins in. So we've got the basic setup. We can go through and configure things like the zoom level, the height, and so on. So let's just make this a little bigger so we can see a little easier what's going on. We can also control things like the scroll, the info window, and so on as well. So you can configure this any way you want to. Now, before we configure any of those options, we need to go through and set up the query. This is we're going to tell it where we want to find that data and how we want to work. So to come down to the post type query tab, open that up and you can see it says use query. I'm going to click on there. We now have a lot of new options. We've got the query type. And we've also then got options for where you want to pull that data. So first of all, we've got custom post type, which is obviously what we're going to use. However, you've also got ACF relations. So if you're setting up a relationship between multiple different data sources inside ACF, you can use that. 
And also we've got then from specific posts. So you could pull this in from a specific post that may have a list of sort of uh, data to do with the actual locations you want to use. Like I say, for this example, we're gonna use a custom post type. And from there, we now need to tell it what the post type actually is. So I'm gonna click and drop that down and we're gonna choose properties, which is the custom post type that I've set up to have all the property data. Once we click on that, you can see that now immediately pulls the data in and you can see that the three properties that I've already added into this demonstration setup are now automatically listed in their relevant locations as part of our map. So it's incredibly simple. We can also go through and filter things based upon taxonomies if we want to. However, we don't need to at this point. That's the basics of setting this up. We've got that data in there. Now we need to do one more thing before we have to worry about anything else like to do with styling things and setting anything that we want. We need to tell it that when a pin is clicked on, we want it to do something because currently, if we save this out, nothing's really gonna happen. We're gonna come over to the info window tab and from there you will see we have an option that says link to post. I'm going to click on that, that now makes it a link to take us through to the post itself. So when we click on that, it'll know it's going to go through to the relevant post that has all the details about this specific property. That's really it. That's all we need to do. It's incredibly simple to set up. And once you've done it, you now have a dynamic Google map that you can link through, click on any of those pins and jump over and take a look at the property, business, or whatever you kind of want to link this to. But there's still a lot of other options inside this particular widget. We can, if we want to, come into the marker section and we can change the marker image. So if we had a specific marker image we wanted to use to pinpoint our businesses or our property locations, we could change it to that. We would also come into the styles and as you can see, we can change the styling of the map. Currently it's set to roadmap. However, if we want to, we can set that to satellite. We could change it to hybrid or we can use the option for terrain. So depending upon the kind of data you want to pull in and what kind of pins you're dropping in your map, you still have that option now to go through and style the map any way you want. I'm gonna come back and just choose roadmap because it's more relevant to what we're currently doing. But you can see once we choose this option, we now have a second set of options for the styling. You can see we've got none, we've got custom, and we've got snazzy style. If we choose custom, we can drop in any sort of snazzy JSON style map and all you need to do is simply come over and you can jump over to snazzymaps.com and you can configure things inside there and then you can copy and paste that code in. You could also set this up dynamically if you want to. You can see we've got a dynamic option, so you can use that. Or we can come down and just choose snazzy style and that gives us a predefined list of different options we can use. So as you can see, we've got things like light gray. We can click on there, that'll pull it in. We've now got it styled in that particular way. We can, if we want to, come in and choose something else. Let's just say we want blue essence. And as you can see, that now pulls that styling in. So you could configure this to look any way you want to make sure it's in keeping with the styling you've got set up on your website. So that's quite nice to see we've got a visual way of styling things very easily. Let's just put that back to none and just leave it as the default Google options. Come to controls, you can see now we can go through and configure exactly what data we want and how things work as part of the map itself. So we've got map type control, we can enable or disable any of these options. You can see now we can only view the actual styling that's been set up. We don't have control over the Google Maps, so we can change that if we want to ourselves. The pan control, you can see we can easily set that up to be enabled or disabled, same as the rotate, scale, street view, and so on. So we can configure this to get exactly what we want and limit any options we don't want the end user to start playing around with or potentially have problems with. So that's the basics content section. Under settings, you can see we can set up the source in there or we can come into advanced and we can do the normal things for styling. But that really is all there is to creating these multi pinpoint maps, linking them through then from ACF into dynamic content for Elementor, this plugin. And I just think it's a very, very easy way of working. Now this is gonna make up part of a much more detailed tutorial where I'm gonna be showing you how to create a full real estate website. This will be part of it. So if you're interested in finding out more, make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified as soon as that new video is released, which should be in the next week or two. If you found this useful and you'd like to find out more about this particular plugin, the link is in the description along with any other links that are relevant inside this video. If you decide you want to purchase this and you use that link, which would be much appreciated, costs you no more money, but we do get a small percentage back as it's an affiliate link. Well, 
Did you find this useful? Is this something you could see yourself using in your own projects? If so, drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know, have you used this? Would you consider using this? Has this just opened doors to what you think you could do linking this through with Elemental Pro, the theme builder, as well as advanced custom fields? I'd love to hear. As always, all the applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.